Hello, I'm Kevin Wartman, the Director of Undergraduate Studies in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Utah. Welcome to Math Enrollment Video B. In this video, I'm going to show you five problems and have you work on those five problems and come up with solutions. Uh, when finding the solutions, uh, just use pen and paper. Uh, please don't use a calculator, a computer, or your phone uh, without help uh, from another person, without using books or notes. And I ask you to solve the problems in this way because this is, these, this is how instructors in certain courses are going to, going to expect you to be comfortable with finding solutions to these styles of problems. Uh, we'll do one problem at a time. I'll give you the problem. You'll press pause, work on it. You'll unpause it. I'll show up again and go through the solutions with you. After we finished all the problems, we'll talk about how you did and what that means about which math course you might want to enroll in. Let's go ahead and get started with the first problem. Here is an equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Uh, you're asked to write it in slope-intercept form and then draw its graph. In parentheses there, I wrote how some people sometimes say slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, if that's more comfortable for you. So write the equation in that form, which is slope-intercept form, and then draw its graph. Go ahead and pause it here, and after you come up with a solution, unpause it, and we'll talk about it together. Welcome back. Uh, I took the equation at the top of the screen and subtracted 2x. Then divide by 3. And notice the 6 thirds is the same thing as 2. So y equals minus 2 thirds x minus 2. That is this equation in slope intercept form. So that's the first half of the solution. The second half is to draw its graph. I've drawn here the x and y axes. The minus 2 tells us what the y-intercept is. So this is going to be a line that passes through minus two and it has slope minus two thirds. So that is a straight line intercepting the y-axis at minus two of slope minus two thirds. And that's its graph. So that's the solution to the first problem. Now let's move on to the second problem. If you have x cubed minus five x squared equals six x, solve for x. What can you say about x in this situation? Press pause here work on that solution and when you're all done, come back and we'll talk about it together. Welcome back. We'll start by subtracting six X. Now we can factor out an X. So we have X times a quadratic, that quadratic being X squared minus five X minus six. We have X times a quadratic equals zero. If you multiply two things together and you get zero, then you know that one of those two things that you were multiplying had to be zero. That is either X was zero or the quadratic polynomial was zero. Well, X is zero, that's simple enough, uh, a little bit more complicated. What does it mean for X squared minus five X minus six to be zero? For that, you, you can use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula tells you that x is minus negative five plus or minus the square root of minus five squared minus four times negative six, and then you divide all of that by two. Working through and simplifying out, you'll see that x is five plus or minus seven divided by two. If it's five plus seven, that'll be 12 divided by two or six. If it's five minus seven, that'll be minus two divided by two or negative one. So we picked up two more solutions. We had x equals zero in the middle of our screen and knowing the solutions to the quadratic equation in the middle of the screen tells us that x equals six could be an option and x equals minus one could be an option. So those are our three options for what x might be. That is the solution to this problem. Moving on to the next problem. Solve for x if three times the square root of five minus two x equals a nine. Press pause here and come back when you're done with that. Welcome back. We can divide by three, then we can square, then we could subtract five. We'll have minus two X equals four, divide by minus two tells us that X equals minus two. So X is negative two is a solution to this problem. Let's move on to another problem. Evaluate eight to the minus two thirds. Now in some sense, eight to the minus two thirds is a perfectly good number. That's a precise number. Uh, the problem here is to be able to write that number in a sort of a more familiar form, a form that doesn't require exponents. So I'll give you a moment to evaluate that. And um, when you're finished, unpause the video and we'll talk about the solution. Well, 
Welcome back. The minus in the exponent means that this should be a fraction underneath of one. The two in the exponent means that we're squaring the third, the three in the denominator means that we're taking a cube root. So start with eight, take a cube root, square it, put it in the bottom of a fraction underneath one. What is the cube root of eight? That's two. So you have two squared, which is four in the bottom of a fraction underneath one, that is eight to the minus two thirds is one quarter. And that's the solution for that problem. Let's move on to another problem. Solve for x if two divided by x minus one equals eight divided by three x plus six. Press pause here, I'll see you back in a moment. Welcome back. Multiply by three x plus six, multiply by x minus one, two times three x plus six is six x plus 12, eight times x minus one is eight x minus eight. Subtract 6x, add 8, and divide by 2. x is 10. That's the solution to this problem. I don't recall if that's our last problem. Let's check. That was our last problem. So if you watched video A, and if you got correct answers to the problems that were given there, if you have a green check mark for video A, but in contrast, you watch this video B and you were a little uncomfortable with coming up with solutions to these problems, then we recommend Math 1030, Math 1010, and Math 1040 as excellent options for you to enroll in. If you watch, if you went through these problems and you were able to find out the solutions and you were comfortable doing that, then the courses shown on your screen would all be good options. 1030, 1090, 1050, 1040, 1070, 1080, those would all be good options. It might also be that maybe a calculus level course is appropriate. And to see that, we'll have to check with videos C and D. Uh, so if you're moving on to those, I'll see you there. Thanks.